one day we will have a week go where we don't talk about the Activision, 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 Activision. I can't even say Activision acquisition. But Paul, that week is not this week. <laughs> it's definitely not this week. So just this morning, I guess UK time or whatever, two mm -hmm. things have come out. Microsoft signed another 10-year deal yep. with a European company called Nware. Mm -hmm. uh, cloud gaming, same sort of thing Microsoft had been doing. But also, NVIDIA came out in defense of Microsoft and said, look, they should be able to do this because we'll get more games on our platform. So, I, I, <laughs> I, I can't keep saying, oh yeah, I, yes, I can keep saying the same thing. There is no reason <laughs> to justify blocking this. Mer like it, there, it just doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. I, I have, I have uh, backlogged a bunch of uh, commentary and news information about this story. I intended to write a premium post yesterday. I, I think I wrote twelve or thirteen posts yesterday. It was so busy. There were a lot of um, initial, you know, quarterly financial reports, et cetera. Mm -hmm. But, um. There's a lot going on here, and one of the little thing, one of the little things, one of the things I read was back in February the CMA issued a hundred something page report about this, and they complained about two things. And one of them was Call of Duty, mm -hmm. you know. The other one, which no one paid attention to, was cloud gaming. And uh, and Microsoft addressed the concerns, and basically the commentary around this is if you look at their actual complaint about cloud gaming. It can be fixed by the exact thing I said it could be fixed by, which is Microsoft just offers the same deal that they've been offering for Call of Duty. They just mm -hmm. say, look, if, if there are competitors in this market, we'll make sure that these games could go to those services as well. Done. And by the way, you know they're going to do that because they are doing it. Uh, you know, these 10-year deals that Microsoft's making started off being console makers. Nintendo, they tried Sony and failed. And then they moved to these other services. In fact... The majority of the deals they've uh, taken or g given or whatever mm -hmm. have been with cloud companies. <laughs> like what? What? I, I don't. I don't even know what. Why we're th the only thing we should be talking about is our excitement over Call of Duty coming to Xbox Game Pass. I don't understand how this is still uh, an open question. It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't have to make sense, Paul Threat. It's also reaffirmed my view is of the UK as the backwater of Europe and that they're, you know, not to get off on some kind of a political, geopolitical thing, but Brexit is the stupidest idea in a long list of stupid ideas. And it is a, rep, I mean, this is the only country, a major Western mm -hmm. country in the world to not emerge on the other side of the pandemic in okay shape. Like they're actually worse off than they were before the pandemic. It's uh, it's astonishing. Like it's just a lot of really bad decision making. There's also a little bit of speaking of politics, a little bit of nonsense here where the FTC and the U.S. regulators know they're not going to be able to get what they want in the United States. It's just never none of this stuff's going to work. So they just pass it off to their European counterparts because they they know that these guys will do the hard work that they can't do to regulate these companies, right? So they've they've done it with the uh, EU. Mm -hmm. And they did it with uh, the CMA. Same thing. They, they're like, here's all the information we have. Here's what we think. Do we all agree what should happen? Good. You guys do it. And it's just, it's, it's freaking nonsense. It's just, it's crazy. So there was a headline where you were mm -hmm. chatting. Ranting. Uh, <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah. And I was trying to validate it, but I can't seem to do it. And the headline is to the effect of Microsoft, Microsoft tries to steal users with Bing ads when they visit Google Bard and Edge, but I don't see anything. What is the user? I, I'm not seeing any. Yeah, so it's like when you go to download Chrome with Edge, mm -hmm. or you go to some Microsoft site with Chrome or what or whatever. I don't know what I'm talking about anymore. But there's that whole browser thing, like, oh, you should be using this other browser, right? And it's like yeah. you should be using this other AI. <laughs> You so know, I is don't that what it's doing? See it. It's supposedly you know how like sometimes it's like the little like there's like blue text in the URL bar and it comes from the right side and it says like you can click here for Bing shopping or something like that. That's right. That's what the user saw and maybe it's like a A B test and I'm not in. I'm not saying it's not accurate. Uh, but did it's you not know doing you it could use this instead because it's uh, sneaky sneaky. Yeah. It's weird it's weird because there's never been any indication whatsoever that um you know, Edge is in any way terrible. So um, this is probably a big shock to people. Is that what's happening? Yeah. 
Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Bard is Bard is just a terrible name, and I hope they have to rebrand it. That's all I want, Paul. <laughs> this one's personal for you. Yeah, that one might be a little personal. I mean, it's tragic. That's it is a Friday, case. after all. Is it? And thankfully. Remember when spring started happening early and we were so happy and we thought this is going to be the greatest year. Did we? And instead it's been like Seattle for the past two months and it's just been dreary and terrible. It is every day. Yeah. And it's only 56. Although it's supposed to be 64 today, which is a good temperature. We'll see what tomorrow brings. Really only care about Fridays or Saturdays, I should say. Right. So I don't know. Uh, not too much else is happening other than the world ending, which is just sort yeah. of usual. Usual. Well, but there is uh, well one thing that may be worth mentioning is uh, Microsoft has announced in the <laughs> slyest and quietest of ways that um, they're not going to release any more Windows 10 updates. Oh right. And that the first long-term servicing channel version of Windows 11 will arrive in the second half of next year. Um, so that's interesting. It was one of the one of the issues I came up with some months ago when I was trying mm -hmm. to explain why Windows 11 hasn't really been a big hit with the enterprise. And I think uh, LTSC is a big part of it. Well, there's that and still can't really fundamentally answer the question of, okay, we'll spend all this time doing it. Now what? Yeah, right, right, right. I mean, uh, given that Windows 11 is essentially a new version of Windows 10, I, I mm -hmm. maybe it's likely impossible that Microsoft doesn't really care which one you're on, right? I mean, other than this is going to be an upgrade cycle for hardware, and God knows the industry could use that right now. Um, which, yeah. you know, again, speaks to the timing of the Windows 11 release. I mean, uh, they it kind of came out just as the PC market was starting to dip a little bit after the pandemic. And uh, you can make the argument, we could have used it this year, mm -hmm. you know, and this year it's maybe in better shape than it was. No, not maybe. It's in much better shape than it was, you know, last year or certainly two years ago. Yeah. But that'll be about the time Windows 12 ships, we believe. I know. I so what you'll get is a long-term branch of Windows 11 that will never be updated. And then Windows 12 would be the new Windows 11 thing. Yeah. Uh, around and around we go. What's the music on the uh, merry-go-round? I don't know. Our, be Benny Hill for us. <laughs> yeah, exactly. 